I want you all to think back. Think back to when you were seven or eight years old and someone asked you what you wanted to be when you grow up. Was it a doctor, a mother, maybe an FBI agent? Whatever it was, we all had a story, something we envisioned was going to happen, right? Fast forward until now. If somebody asked you if your life has gone as planned, what would you say? My guess is the majority of you would say no. <laughs> There's been twists and turns and obstacles down this path called life. But when you look back at those obstacles, whatever they may be, did something good come out of them? Was there a silver lining or maybe you ended up better on the other side? When I woke up in the Baghdad emergency room on April 13th of 2004, that was not supposed to be part of my story. I was 24 years old. I was still in my army fatigues with one crucial difference. My left leg was gone, my left leg. I had images of a Humvee, a cracked windshield, and a lot of blood. And as I laid there in that Baghdad ER, I knew that my life was forever changed. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is where my real story begins. A story that could be one of tragedy, but instead one of tragedy turned into triumph. And an example that we all had the power to create our own story. I like to say that I was born a patriot, a lover of the red, the white, and the blue. Senior year in college, I had joined ROTC, and September 11, 2001 happened, a day that changed the world. And it was that day that I sat in, in the classroom and my ROTC instructor said, today, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when you're gonna deploy. And the uniform that I was so proud to wear on American soil, I knew I'd be wearing on foreign soil as well. So two, two months later, I graduated and I was commissioned as a second lieutenant, a proud lieutenant in the United States Army. And then two short years later, I found myself boarding a plane, Kevlar on, flak vest, M16 in hand, headed over to Iraq in hopes that I could make a difference in the world. The fateful day of April 13, 2004, started out just like any other day. We had been in country three short weeks, and it was a routine convoy through central Baghdad. Our vehicle left the gate, and about 10 minutes later, it happened so fast. We went under a bridge. There was a big boom. There was a deafening explosion. I looked up. The windshield was cracked. Our vehicle swerved. We ricocheted off of a guardrail. And we ended up crashing into this Iraqi woman's shack. This was like something you see in a movie. This was not something that was supposed to be part of my story. But there I was, laying there, on the sands of Iraq, a combat medic over me, trying to stop my bleeding, putting a tourniquet on, saving my life. I had gone 24 years of my life with both of my legs, and now I was missing one. From there, I was brought to an American hospital in Baghdad for a life-saving surgery, through Launchville, Germany, and eventually on to Walter Reed Army Medical Center where I would spend the next many, many months trying to find my new normal and trying to figure out how to live my life with just one leg. And when I got there, I looked around, and when I was able to realize what was going on, I saw that there were soldiers missing two, three, four limbs. They had traumatic brain injuries. They had lost their eyesight. I looked at myself and I thought, holy cow, am I lucky? All I lost was one leg. And I made a promise then to live my life for those that had given the ultimate sacrifice, because too many have, and to make my story, to choose to make it one of triumph, because I had that opportunity. And with the help of family and friends, some optimism, a lot of stubbornness, things started to get better. And before long, I got a prosthetic leg, and I learned to walk again, and I knew that I would be independent. I learned that toenail polish not only goes on, but can come off a prosthetic foot, an important detail for 24-year-old women. <laughs> and I learned that although my dance moves would no longer be what they used to be and they were pretty good, 
I had some pretty cool new dance moves of my own. I mean, check this out. I mean, imagine seeing that on the dance floor. I also learned that it was OK to celebrate the loss of a leg. Sounds a little bit silly, but every, every April 13th, I celebrate what I affectionately call Little Leg. And we celebrate her birthday because we're, I'm happy she's alive. And we celebrate life. But then the real life changer of getting back into athletics and choosing to take the opportunity to come out here to Vail, Colorado with the Vail Veterans Program because they gave me the opportunity to learn how to ski on one leg. And I came out here, thank you, surrounded by the beautiful Colorado mountains. And I realized that if I can do this, well, then I can do anything. And I went back to Walter Reed, and I chose to get on the bike and learn how to ride a bike. I chose to get in the pool and learn how to swim. And that's when I noticed that the water, I had this calming effect that just made me feel whole again. And learning about the US Paralympics, and if I trained hard enough, I could compete on the world's biggest athletic stage and represent a country I defended over in Iraq. So a lot, a lot of laps in the pool, a lot of sacrifice. And in 2008, I found myself in Beijing, China, swimming in the renowned water cube. And I was a Paralympian. And while I didn't win a medal, an even more important moment in my life at that moment was being nominated to carry the American flag into closing ceremonies, me, the American flag, and a sold out stadium. Talk about a moment. <laughs> but my story is not done. I started a new chapter last year as a wife and a mother. And my husband and son motivate me more than anything in this world. And later this year, you will see me on the stage at the Rio Paralympic Games, where I hope to swim, bike, and run my way to the podium, a story that has yet to happen, but one that I have chosen to do all that I can to make happen. But I'm not here just to tell you about myself. I'm here to challenge you. What's your story? What's your change? We all have a story to tell, and you should be proud of it. You should be what you want your story to be. Even if parts of your story were unexpectedly written for you, like mine was in Baghdad, it doesn't mean you can't own your story moving forward. We are the author. We can choose to stay on the page, turn the page, or start a new chapter anytime we wish. And while we can't look forward and see the end, that's really the beauty of it. You should embrace the unknown, be optimistic, and be confident towards the future. And you should look around, because there is inspiration everywhere, even in the darkest of places. When I was at Walter Reed, instead of choosing to focus on the devastation of the soldiers there, I chose to focus on the resilience and use that as inspiration. Unexpected things happen to all of us. But I'm an example of the good that can come out on the other side. I didn't choose to have my leg taken from me from a roadside bomb, but it happened. But if I could go back, I would suffer through the loss of my leg all over again. Because it taught me the most important lesson, that regardless of what happens to us, we have a choice. At any given moment, we can choose fear, doubt, worry. We can choose to be prideful. We can choose to be depressed. Make no mistake about it, that is a choice. Or you can choose to move forward. You can choose to be positive. You can choose to forgive. You can choose to be a light and to share your talents with friends, family, strangers, and the world. You can choose to be happy. It is my sincere hope that none of you ever experienced a bomb as I did. But we all have metaphoric bombs in our life, unexpected things, and it's up to us on how we deal with them. So it's my hope that if someone asked you if your life has gone as planned, if you say no, that you do so with a confident smile, knowing that whatever obstacles have come your way, you've chosen to make yours a good one. The power of choice is yours. Use it. Thank you.